Welcome to The Artist Matters. I'm Alex Rudy, and each week you will meet incredible artists from all walks of life. Filmmakers, writers, actors, painters, musicians, and so many more sharing their stories to motivate and inspire the creative in you. Whether you're doing it for fun or looking to make a living, this show will help you on your journey to bring out the artist within and letting the world know that your art matters. Hey everyone, welcome to The Artist Matters. I'm your host, Alex Rudy. Welcome to episode number 52. That's right. We made it a whole year, practically. Um, But the real one-year anniversary is next week, which will be a compilation episode of many of the guests you've heard on previous episodes, recapping and getting some great sound bites and quotes. It's been a task <laughs> listening to all of these shows. I'm still not done as of now, but I've made it to um, the November guests. So I'm almost into December. So I only have two months, well, maybe two and a half months to go. So I got to go through the rest of them and see what's what. But at the same time, it's really great hearing some of these episodes again and for almost forgetting what I had discussed with the artists that I featured, hearing their stories and their inspiration, man. It's great stuff. I'm so glad that I was able to do it. I'm on the fences of now whether I should do this weekly. I'm debating about making it a like a seasonal thing. A lot of podcasters do seasons, like season one, season two, season three. They break it up where they have some time off. Because I do have another podcast idea floating around. And I would like to make room for that. And you know, it's challenging to find guests and arrange a time with them, get their bio, write their questions, record them, edit them, upload their episodes, get the website ready, get their photos uploaded, have all their links, plus have a day job. It's challenging. So I'm just toying around with that idea. We'll see. Well, let's move on to today's guest. And This is a good way to round out my first year because he was one of the original guests I was looking to get on the show. We got connected through my friend Susan Capicato, who I did the Standing Ovation Dinner Theater shows with, and she was part of his dinner theater group. And we connected, and I figured he'd be a great guest. He has lots of theater background and acting and directing and teaching. And I finally got the stars aligned. We were always trying to find some time, but he was either on tour or doing shows or busy, and then he was moving to North Carolina. But we finally found the time, and it's kind of great that this has come full circle. So today we have Jimmy Ferraro. Now, Jimmy has been in the biz for 40 years. He is one of those rarities I never really see in life that has been a full-time actor, performer, singer, director, teacher, producer for practically all his teen and adult life. I kid you not. He did his first nightclub appearance as a singer at the age of 16. And he studied voice, dancing, and... He had focus that he wanted to do this. Nothing was going to deter him. And it didn't. And he has since gone on to do so many shows. 3,000 performances of his favorite play, Fiddler on the Roof. Many of them in his favorite role, Tevia. Other favorite roles include Edna in Hairspray. Sancho in Man of La Mancha and Nicely, Nicely in Guys and Dolls. 
But not only that, as I mentioned, he is involved in so many aspects of the theater biz. He opened the first dinner theater in Pasco County, Florida in 1977. And he's done several tours, been on Broadway. You get to hear him talk about that. And during the 80s, he was fortunate enough to cross paths with the woman who eventually became his wife, Dieta. And they've been married since. He does talk about the schedules. How does a couple stay together where sometimes one of them will be on tour for months and the other one could be on tour when the other one comes back? And how they find a balance and keep the marriage together? He also opened other theaters in Florida. The Angel Garden Cafe Theater and the Angel Cabaret Theater. And when it came to teaching, he opened a studio with his name, of course, attached to it, called Jimmy Ferraro's Academy of Performing Arts. There's so much more. This is a a really good conversation. I'm so grateful that we were able to finally connect and chat. It's been a year in the making, but I finally got him. So, without further ado, here is Jimmy Ferraro. All right, let's welcome to the show, finally, Jimmy Ferraro. Hi. Hello, it's great to be here, Alex. Thank you. Oh, it is great to finally have you. Probably the one, one of the longest guests I've been trying to pursue to be on here. But I got you. <laughs> he had to go to another state to uh, get on the show, but that's okay. What's See that? You're... All the way to North Carolina. Yeah, hey, that is you're on the show. So let's begin at the beginning. Where did you grow up? I grew up, well, I was born in Queens, New York, and then I kind of like grew up uh, from the age of nine on uh, on Long Island, New York, mm-hmm. in Valley Stream. Oh, Nassau. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nassau County, Valley Stream, just 38 minutes to Manhattan on the Long Island Railroad. Mm-hmm. So were, were you into the arts as a kid in any way? Was always, it? always, always. Always, yes. In fact, there are eight millimeter uh, movies. Uh, many of your viewers may not even know what that is, but they were home <laughs> movies, <laughs> home movies of of me singing and dancing, of course, without any sound at the time. Uh, from when I was like three years old. Wow. I was always interested in always singing and dancing and making jokes and making faces. And uh, <laughs> when I was uh, in kindergarten. At PS96 in South Ozone Park, I was in a school recital, and there was a producer from King World Productions, uh, Talent Scout, that saw me. And they, at that time, they were planning on uh, making doing a remake of The Little Rascals, and they were interested in me as Spanky. <laughs> Uh, but of course, now my you know Italian parents uh, who didn't know anything about show business didn't want their kid to be uh, hooked up in something like that. Uh, uh, so, but that's how kind of it all all started. You know, when we moved to uh, Valley Stream, it was very progressive. The school system was progressive, and um, un- like we didn't in public school in uh, the city in Queens. We didn't have as many electives and opportunities available to us. But when we moved to Long Island when I was nine years old, um, there was only 21 students in my class. So I came from a a class in Queens that had 50-some-odd students. Plus, they had music classes and they had drama classes. So I was exposed to so much more culture. So culture... But what about <laughs> what about the arts? Was the were you involved in the theater in uh, absolutely. school? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I was in every play. I was in every um, <laughs> music uh, program, uh, and it's just you know I was very fortunate. I had a really good singing voice as a kid, and I would always be given solos in the in the choruses. Uh, and um, then when I auditioned for uh, school plays, I was always giving the singing part. So I was very fortunate in that respect. <clears throat> Funny that when I was uh, 13 years old, I uh, thought I need to be taking some voice lessons. This is what I want to do. I want to be on Broadway. I want to have a career as a musical theater actor. So what I did is I, I on my own, I rode my bike, my, my Stingray oh. <laughs> bicycle to um, 
a, a telephone booth on Merrick Road in Valley Stream, and I looked up voice teachers in the area, and I found one that was right near my middle school. <clears throat> so I called them up, and I said, oh, hello, my name is Jimmy Ferraro, and I would like to take voice lessons. <laughs> and uh, that was the Grace Buckley Music Studio. And um, she says, well, how old are you? And I said, well, I'm 13 years old. Well, it's a little young for me to take on male students, but do your parents know that you're calling? And I said, no, mm. <laughs> they didn't. Um, but I said, I'll tell them if you if you could give me an audition because I really want to study. And she she did. She gave me an audition. And in fact, she gave me a scholarship to be able to study. So that's where I started my voice lessons at 13 years old at the Grace Buckley Music Studio. It was right across the street from the middle school. So I could just go there um right after school was out and go take my lessons. And how were lessons? They were wonderful. Um, and she started me right away with, uh, singers would know about <laughs> the, um, the Italian arias and the Italian arts songs, uh, which is always a good place to start um, as a singer. Uh, so I, I went right into the Italian art songs and started learning them and uh, classical tenor songs. So all of the Irish tenor songs, that was a, a big start for me as well there. And when, when I was 16 years old, I kind of had my first break. That's when I made my first nightclub appearance. And, of course, my parents had to come with me uh, because I wasn't old enough to be there on my own. And it was um, at the world-famous San Susan. Um, it was a nightclub that was very well-known all over the place. And I had the opportunity to sing there on a Saturday night um, as a featured singer. Uh, so that was a marvelous opportunity. Um, there was the agent um, for the San Susan was the same agent as Eddie Murphy's. Oh. And, mm -hmm, yes, it was an exciting opportunity. Uh, but then now at that time, of course, my, my parents had to okay everything. So they brought me into the office after my, my show there, and they wanted to do some more things. Uh, but my father sat me down afterwards, and he said, you have to realize that, you know, your age and, a bit of the commitment that it takes to to go forward in this and it may not be something that you really want to do with an agent right now and i kind of like read through the lines um knowing a little bit more about uh show business activities in new york <laughs> that may not be uh, conducive to um, getting an education and going that way but just jumping into it so I made the decision not to take that route at that time. Uh, but that didn't stop me because from there I started uh, singing at another nightclub called the Top Hat. And um, again, my parents had to come with me, just 16 years old. And in the meantime, I was still studying voice and I was studying piano theory. I was taking dance lessons. Um, and I was, uh, in addition to my uh, going to school and my regular education, I was also performing in all of the school shows. Busy schedule. <laughs> it was, but I loved it. I mean, I you know, I, I would just uh, do my homework and then run to lessons. Um, or if I was in a show after school, I would go directly uh, right to the rehearsals and then, you know, come home for dinner, do my homework and start the day all over again. It was, it was, it was a busy time. You know, and also, I, I forgot that when I was 15, um, I, I also won a scholarship to go to a, um, a, a, a performing arts camp in uh, Ontario, Canada. Oh. And that was my first time away from home, my first time on an airplane. And how was and that camp? It was outrageous. It was wonderful. I mean, I, I took classes every day in acting and singing and dancing. Um, and I was in three shows that summer there. Oh, they did three uh, shows. Wow. Yeah, three musicals. I did uh, The Canterbury Tales, uh, Sweet Charity, and uh, Once Upon a Mattress. 